Hey everybody, it's Kevin the Patriot Punk. All right, that was stupid. Guys, I am chronically behind the times when it comes to consuming propaganda, I mean pop culture. I don't go see new movies, I don't pay for cable, and why should I? It's all filled with anti-American, anti-white, anti-Christian, left-wing propaganda and degeneracy. It's also in your face. So, I don't get excited about new TV shows or movies very often. But when a viewer told me about this TV show, The Handmaid's Tale, it piqued my interest. You know, us libertarians and conservatives, we love dystopian novels. We love 1984. We love Brave New World. We love Atlas Shrugged. So I thought, even if this show is total garbage, maybe it'll have redeeming qualities. Maybe it'll teach the power of the individual like V for Vendetta, or teach the negatives of large government, like the Orwell books. Well, boy, was I wrong. There is nothing redeemable about this show. I'm going to show you guys a clip of the actors and actresses involved in this show talking about just how revolutionary this show is. Uh, Handmaid's Tale, <laughs> based on a book called The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood written in 1985, and it's about a totalitarian regime of sort of right-wing fundamentalists who take over America and um, put in place uh, something called Gilead. It okay, so some quick information. The author, Margaret Atwood, is a Canadian, a communist, and a self-described feminist, so three strikes there. And the book is about right-wing Christian conservatives, and I use that term in air quotes because there's nothing Christian or conservative about these characters, they're pretty much what a leftist who's never met a Christian or a conservative might imagine the worst Christian and conservative to be. The women are trying to survive Gilead, essentially. It's a bit of a cautionary tale. Those that govern in Gilead collect all the fertile women because fertile women are so rare. And they essentially turn them into breeding stock. So this is a cautionary tale? Just how is this a cautionary tale? How in any way are right-wing conservative Christians trying to turn women into breeding stock? You know, if you want to make a cautionary tale, make a cautionary tale about a bunch of dumb brainwashed feminists who vote against the interest of their own country and let in a bunch of invaders who will actually turn them into breeding stock <laughs> Islam. That would be a cautionary tale. And so men basically run everything and use fertile women as kind of sex pregnancy slaves. What, <coughs> also, <coughs> Islam. What, what, it, what it does to me is to remind us of how fragile things are. So I'll agree with her there. Things are very fragile. Right now, we have the greatest quality of life any generation has ever known, thanks to conservative Christian and capitalist principles. And we have a bunch of brainwashed fembots like these pushing an ideology that has led to the ruin of many nation states. When I first signed on to the show, which was a year ago, it was incredibly relevant already. I mean, anyone who, you know, lives on this planet knows that it's not like, you know, day one of women's rights started in November. It's, you, it's impossible to ignore that, you know, having who we have in the White House as opposed to having a female president is going to make this book and this show uh, yeah, more relevant, more believable. Okay, so you knew they would take a cheap shot at Donald Trump in this. That's to be expected. But to act like Hillary Clinton is some champion of women's rights, when you're talking about a show where men take a bunch of young, fertile women and have their way with them, that's like the Clintons' M.O., both Hillary and Bill. This, this extraordinary novel was relevant at the time it was written and it will be, it's relevant today and it'll be relevant in the future, let's hope not so much. She didn't make anything up that everything that happens in the book has happened in real life somewhere. So as you guys catch how she threw the word somewhere at the end of that statement, she goes, all of these things are happening to women somewhere. Yeah, we know they're happening to women somewhere. We know where somewhere is. That's Muslim majority countries. That's everywhere that's not a Western Christian majority capitalist country. Gilead will not occur here because we will not allow it. And we have the intelligence and the passion and the fuck you to get that job done. 
So, of course, Gilead isn't going to happen here. You know, she says that, and while she's saying that, they're showing these people in the streets protesting. That's the left. The left go out in the streets protesting, trying to fight with police and overthrow the government. You know, if we had our way, people on the far right like myself, we might throw you out of a helicopter, but we would never keep you around to breed with, especially not some foul-mouthed, vulgar woman who's too low IQ to get her point across without using F-bombs. I actually, Margaret Atwood gave, Atwood gave me great advice. She said, keep an eye on that Constitution, you know. It's those infringements that will bring it all down. So what a way to end this video with the leftists talking about the Constitution. You know, these are the very people who wiped their butt with our Constitution, both literally and figuratively. They worry about a right-wing takeover like in this show, yet they are the same people who are spending millions of dollars organizing young, naive kids to march out of school demanding that we be disarmed. These are the same people who are spending millions more dollars lobbying to try to limit our First Amendment rights. Yet they worry about us. You know, if the left are worried about a right-wing takeover, it's only because they know what they have done to this country is so subversive and so evil that eventually people are going to push back and push back hard. But if we did push back, we wouldn't take them as sex slaves. We might throw them out of a helicopter, but nobody's going to want a bunch of blue-haired bimbo beluga feminists as sex slaves. You know, they have low IQ. They're ugly. We wouldn't want to breed with them. So getting back to the show, this show is entertaining. I will give it that. But just like everything else in entertainment nowadays, it is being weaponized and is infused with Marxist propaganda. They are using shows like this to divide people, to cause fear, fear of conservatives, fear of Christians. And we see this with a lot of shows lately. If there's any doubt to the fact that this show is full of Marxist propaganda, just go watch a few episodes. You will see all kinds of little Easter eggs to Marxism. For instance, the May Day riots, right? We just saw these May Day riots. May Day is a communist holiday where leftists go out in the streets to try to foment revolution. Well, on the show, the counter-revolution forces are called the May Day Movement. So that's sort of a nod to communism right there. Yeah, the show's pretty bad when it comes to that kind of stuff. And this is dangerous. We see media being used as a weapon all the time now. And what it does is it ostracizes one group while promoting another group and putting that other group on a pedestal. And when you ostracize a group, when you start pushing them out of the mainstream, when you back them into a corner, they become dangerous. So in a way, it could be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Anyway, this is something despots and tyrants have used since the beginning of television and radio media. So, yeah, I mean, it's bad. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. Check out both my channels. Marxism, the New Age, and the Patriot Punk on YouTube. I'm outie.